Hello, my name is Patrick Davis. I teach seventh grade at Powell Middle School. The handout that accompanies this video can be found on the KCS website under the Students Resources tab. This is activity one for science seventh grade. And today I'm gonna to be hopefully teaching you about uh, Earth's atmosphere and the composition or what makes up the actual atmosphere. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there, get my slides to move. All of this is going to be found at knoxschools.org. And also, um, if you have learned something, you can always tweet at, at KCSS Science. A um, couple of things. If this video is hard to understand, you can kind of read through the checklist there. Um, closed caption might help, or you can adjust the speed, pause the video or ask somebody at home to kind of help you out. And hopefully uh, we can figure this out together, okay? So uh, this is our main uh, topic for today is what makes up Earth's atmosphere, our beautiful planet, right? If you wanna take a second and pause the video, maybe write down a couple of things that you think the atmosphere is made of, please do so. Maybe some of your possible answers where uh, a lot of your general ones, people would say, well, Mr. Davis, it's made of air, clouds, maybe particles, maybe even some of you said water vapor. Um, if you go back to some of the chemistry you learned back in fall, maybe you even brought up some of the different gases, um, elements or compounds that were discussed um, earlier. I know I have a four-year-old and when I asked her, she said Skittles. So. Uh, probably not Skittles, but let's kind of go ahead and dive into this. Today's main objective will to be able to understand a graph that represents the composition of Earth's atmosphere as a mixture of gases and discuss the potential for the, as the atmosphere to change. Uh, some of your driving questions that we're going to focus on, obviously, is what is the composition of Earth's atmosphere and how is the atmosphere a working system? Uh, before we kind of get into a little bit of review, I just want to point out uh, quick review number one and why it's highlighted. That's going to coincide with your worksheet that goes with this activity. So at different points, when you see the highlighted words there, if you want to kind of look at the material, pause it and refer back to your worksheet, um, that's highly recommended. Uh, so before we kind of get into the composition of Earth's atmosphere, I would like to discuss a little bit of review um, of just Earth's layers and some of the things that you might find there. Troposphere is the lowest layer of this atmosphere. You can kind of see uh, this is definitely where you're going to get air traffic. Uh, a lot of your weather is going to be around in this area. And uh, definitely your heavier elements like oxygen and nitrogen are going to be closer to the Earth because of gravity. Um, stratosphere is kind of that next layer. And kind of between the troposphere and stratosphere, you'll see uh, something very magical we like to call the ozone layer. Uh, we'll go over why that's important once we start talking about uh, a certain element known as oxygen. Mesosphere is the layer just above the stratosphere, and this is where most of all the meteors burn up. Um, this is kind of making its way uh, closer to space and further away from the planet. The thermosphere is a layer that is above the mesosphere. This is where uh, kind of between the mesosphere and the thermosphere, this is where a lot of your satellites are going to be in orbit. Um, and we use satellites for many different things, communication, um, many things. Uh, exosphere is the outermost layer. Many scientists believe to kind of be, this is the edge of space. Uh, the atmosphere is super thin at this point, and uh, it's very cold. Okay, moving on. Here's just another little graph to kind of look at that, um, or just different representation. And you can kind of see from this image right here, uh, this is kind of showing you a thin layer of the ozone, and we'll talk about that. So uh, let's move on to quick review two. And this is before we actually get into the composition, we need to kind of understand and go back over uh, some basic parts of chemistry and atomic structure and what makes up uh, what we refer to as an element. 
So from the picture there, you can see this is just a kind of representation of some of the different elements that you might find in a sample of air. Um, you have some elements that can stand alone, like argon and, and neon, uh, some of your different noble gases. And then also you have some elemental compounds. Uh, these are compounds that are really not stable by themselves, and they have to bond with uh, another of the same compound that's known as a diatomic compound or a diatomic atom. So you will see O2 and nitrogen 2. O is just for oxygen. Hydrogen there is bonded together. Um, so you will have some elements that do that just to kind of make them more stable. Uh, also, you will see some different compounds. So compounds are different elements that bond together, uh, like CO2, or one that you probably hear all the time, H2O, two hydrogen, one oxygen uh, atoms coming together, chemically bonded, also known as a compound. So air is mostly gas. I think we figured that out. And you can kind of see from the list there, I kind of went over those. Uh, some of the other gases, some of the noble gases, we'll kind of refer to as trace gases uh, here in a little bit. Another part of this review for quick review is air is just not gas. Like air is mostly gas, but there's also different particles. Those particles can be referred to as aerosols. Um, some of your different examples from the video, or excuse me, from the pictures there, as you can see, um, on the far left, you definitely see this is a dust cloud that is being generated in uh, coming from the planet or from the land getting into the atmosphere. So definitely dust is a huge part of that. Uh, the Great Dust Bowl is maybe something you refer back to in history. Uh, pollen is another. Uh, pollen, especially this time of year. I know we have tons of oak pollen that has been falling down the last two weeks. Um, air pollutants are another. Those of you who have seen the signs in Knoxville when they give you warnings about air quality. Uh, that's probably because of pollution that's kind of dropped down. Maybe it's a little humid that day, so pollution and air pollutants kind of stick closer to the surface. Um, many different causes of that. Uh, soot is one. Soot is just when you burn or combust anything, uh, it turns back into a gaseous form. And then the last one there is smog. And that kind of goes with air pollutants, and that's kind of definitely going with that picture in the middle. Okay, another part of this quick review is air brings life, okay? Try not to be a naysayer about that, no horsing around, um, but breathing is a big part of life, right? We constantly need that oxygen and uh, we always release CO2. That is a part of being a human, that's part of being an animal. Um, we can also talk about plant life as well, but that should connect to, uh, and kind of ring a bell back to uh, what is known as photosynthesis and cellular respiration. This is also part of the bigger picture of the oxygen CO2 cycle that is probably one of the most important cycles on the planet, in my opinion. Um, another little quick review is let's just kind of focus on carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is given off by plants. It's given off by plants and animals. Um, and hopefully you can kind of refer back to uh, some of the lessons going back over photosynthesis and cellular respiration. It's definitely part of cellular respiration. Every time we uh, exhale, we're definitely getting rid of CO2. Um, another big contributor of uh, CO2 is the burning of fossil fuels. So uh, there's tons of CO2 that is being released into the atmosphere constantly. And you can kind of see from the image, and maybe you've heard in the news lately or from uh, some of your other teachers, um, that this is definitely forming what is known as the greenhouse effect. And what CO2 does is it kind of acts like a blanket uh, around our planet. And what that does is it adds on to the atmosphere and it is harder for some of these UV rays that used to bounce off the surface and go back into space. Well, with the more CO2, it kind of acts as a bubble to hold a lot of that UV or ultraviolet rays in the planet and thus heating up the planet. 
Um, and that'll definitely be discussed in activity two of your summer activities. But let's try to focus on what I'm supposed to do. Um, this is kind of our objective again. So what is the composition of Earth's atmosphere? Let's start with that first driving question. Uh, before that, let's just go over some general terms. Hopefully you know what an atmosphere uh, kind of involves. It is a envelope of gases that surround a planet. Um, there's many different planets out there that have atmospheres. Some of them are much thicker than Earth. Some, are, some of them are much uh, thinner, like Mars definitely has a thinner atmosphere. Um, this atmosphere helps to protect us um, and provides uh, kind of like a Goldilocks effect, right? We're not too far away from the sun that it's super cold and we're not too close to the sun that it's super hot. Our atmosphere helps to maintain uh, this temperature that is essential for uh, plant life and animal life. Um, the atmosphere also is going to allow pressure uh, because of gravity. This is going to allow things not to just freely go back into space. Uh, so things like water vapor, H2O, different compounds that are that have an atomic weight and have you know weight or mass involved in them. Uh, can be stuck in and brought back into the atmosphere. So big picture is it protects all life on Earth and it is held in place uh, by a magical thing we call gravity. <clears throat> so uh, let's talk about some of these major gases. Uh, there you'll see a pie chart here. Um, nitrogen is your biggest player, right? He is 78% uh, of the Earth's atmosphere. Another 20.9, some scientists round that up to 21%, um, definitely is oxygen. And then you will have other things like argon, water vapor, all of these can kind of be lumped together into what is known as a trace gas. So if we made a representation or example to that, I know some of these, uh, a lot of those colorful balls used to be at like your McDonald's and some of your different restaurants. I know as a kid, I used to jump in those and it was awesome. But if we randomly took a sample uh, and tried to make a comparison to the atmosphere, let's say 78 uh, red balls would be representing nitrogen and the orange, there would be 21 of those that would represent oxygen. And then maybe one yellow one could represent, uh, could be a trace gas or water vapor and that would be out of a, a sample of 100 balls. All right, let's take a minute if you want to pause the video and go ahead and fill out your graph. Uh, just need to write down the gases in your percentages and you can add those up and uh, you'll see what you get. Hopefully after you figured out your pie chart it should have come up to 100 percent, right? So in this next little section, I'm just going to go over some of those um, major contributors of the atmosphere composition. Let's start with nitrogen. Nitrogen is definitely the most abundant uh, in the atmosphere. It is highly important. We can say uh, to humans, when we breathe it in and out, it's kind of inert. We don't need it inside of the body um, <clears throat> when we're breathing, but it is definitely uh, some major components of what makes up uh, a lot of what is known as DNA, deoxide ribonucleic acid, right? Uh, so it is definitely some of the key components. Uh, building DNA uh, kind of makes up amino acids and helps to form that chain. Uh, it's definitely essential for to plant growth. Uh, what you can see in that bottom left-hand corner is a tomato plant. Um, I do a lot of gardening, so I have raised garden beds. And probably once a season before I start planting, um, I go back through, uh, I turn over my soil, and also I, I, I get a little uh, soil tester and check just some of the different elements. If I need to add nitrogen, like if I know one uh, garden bed is specifically going to be used for tomatoes, um, I know tomatoes definitely need nitrogen. A lot of your plants, different vegetables or fruits, um, really depends on what they are or require different things in the soil. Um, so you can see from that picture on the left, the leaves have turned, they began to wilt, they turn more of a yellow, almost a brownish. 
Um, and that could be an indication that that plant is not receiving enough nitrogen. Uh, the picture on the right looks like the plant is healthy. And in that case, it's probably doing well on nitrogen. Nitrogen also is part of its own cycle. Um, you will see that nitrogen is uh, in the ground itself. It's in the atmosphere. The nitrogen uh, cycles kind of in front of you there. There's many different parts or components that either add or reduce the amount of nitrogen and uh, they will definitely get into that in future activities. Um, so let's just look at a chart again. Um, and that's another big part. I think you had to write down some things about nitrogen and now you have to graph it. So if you need to pause the video again, uh, please feel free to do so. Oxygen um, is, is great, right? Uh, it, if we talk about the, the composition of the planet, it is around 21%. Uh, the biggest part of oxygen is it is what provides life, right? It is a huge part of cellular respiration. Remember, cellular respiration is the taking in of uh, oxygen and things like glucose, and your body process that, uh, processes that. Oxygen is needed to break down the carbon, the hydrogen, and oxygen to form um, part of ATP that is needed for energy production. And then some of your products that are released from that are like CO2 and definitely water. So that's kind of like a, a recap of cellular respiration, how it works. Also, the ozone layer is created by oxygen. Uh, actually, three um, oxygen molecules or, or, or elements bond together to make O3. And that ozone uh, helps to reflect ultraviolet rays back into uh, space. And it, it just kind of provides a protection or a layer of, uh, of production. Uh, combustion is the last one. Uh, fire is very important, but fire cannot exist without oxygen. We use fire for many different things, not only to propel us through, like in rocketry, uh, through flight, uh, but even food, right, um, to cook things. So many different needs for oxygen. There's definitely an oxygen cycle. Um, this picture is a little more elementary, but it does a really good job showing you that oxygen is not only needed by the horse, the kiddo, the cows, but also plants take in oxygen. Now, plants will go through photosynthesis where they take in carbon dioxide and release oxygen. The plants also in return use some of that oxygen to break down the glucose to promote uh, plant growth. So think about like a little baby sapling, little baby tree that grows up to be uh, a giant sequoia, right? Whereas all the energy it needs to make new bark, to make leaves, uh, roots, and all of that. Uh, so oxygen is the main um, part in cellular respiration that helps to form ATP for all different types of organisms. Um, let's go, so go ahead and if you need to pause it again, go ahead and fill out what you need for oxygen. Uh, the very last thing here is trace or other gases, also just called trace gases. This makes up about 1% and it depends on where you are on the planet, um, what some of these trace elements might be. Uh, carbon dioxide will definitely be a part of that. But you can see I kind of went through some other ones. Argon, this is an element that's going to be needed. Um, argon is an important element for the metal industry. Um, it is used for creating different types of metal. Hydrogen is another one. Hydrogen being the most abundant element in the universe. Um, and definitely particles. And we kind of went over that a couple slides ago, but dust and pollen and different pollutants and smog and soot. Um, the last one is water vapor. Um, this is definitely a major part of the water cycle through evaporation and, you know, think about clouds when they contain enough condensation or liquid, eventually they begin to rain again. And that kind of goes back through the water cycle. So if you need to pause again, sorry, if you need to pause again and look at that chart, go ahead and fill in your trace gases. 
Uh, this is just another chart. You'll see that mostly all, whenever they do an atmosphere composition pie chart, they kind of stick to the pie chart just because it's easier to comprehend. Uh, you can see some minute traces of some different elements. All charts are a little bit different, um, and that's just part of science, right? Uh, many different charts, but usually the same information. So this kind of goes with the home activity. Um, this recommends using M&Ms. Uh, if you don't have M&Ms, you can be creative and use other things. You'll see here in a second that... I do not have any candy at this house. We haven't gone grocery shopping in a couple of weeks now. Um, so A, I do miss the candy, but B, I have definitely lost some weight. So that's a good thing and a little side note. Um, so go ahead, you can kind of switch up your colors, but what I said is if you want to get seven brown ones, two red M&Ms and one yellow for this activity, you will also need a blank piece of paper and some coloring pencils or markers will do as well. Uh, your directions is each candy will represent a certain element or group of elements. Uh, in this case, I wanted the seven brown ones to go with nitrogen. Uh, the oxygen will only have two, and then your trace element will be that yellow one, which will just be that one. Go ahead and sort the different candies by their color. I want you to take out a piece of paper and draw two empty circles. Uh, use the first blank circle and arrange the candies to represent the components of the atmosphere you learned in this lesson. Once you do that, go ahead and draw the lines to create the pie chart around your groups of candies like you saw previously. And then next, label each section with the number of candies into this group and identify the color. So identify the color with the actual element that it represents. Now label all of that just like I said. So, did you get something like this? Um, here's my little pie chart. Uh, you can kind of see on the left there, that's the finished product. I've got my seven brown M&Ms, my two red to represent oxygen, and the one yellow to represent the trace gases. Um, Mr. Davis is old school. Like I said, I don't have any candy at to hizzle. Uh, so, I just used some sticks, a little bit of bark, and some leaves. Uh, my sticks represent the nitrogen as the leaves or the oxygen, and the bark just represents some of the trace gases. Um, so this will be the last little activity here. I want you to imagine that you are in, in both of these places, don't look like a place I would want to be. Uh, the one on the left is, let's say we're walking down the sidewalk there on one of the bridges. I want you to picture, what do you think the composition of the air around that area would consist of. Or you can go to the picture on the right. Um, this looks like a coal burning power plant. You can see the piles of coal there. Um, so if we were perhaps very close to this place, maybe what would be the composition of the air? Uh, would it still be the same, that 78% nitrogen, that 21% oxygen, and just 1% uh, trace gases? Or would it fluctuate? So if you want to pause the video, maybe draw out a little sketch of what your pie chart might look at, go ahead and do so. This is what Mr. Davis got. <clears throat> For me, um, I said, well, if I was in one of those areas, um, and this is all very hypothetical, um, but you can see my trace gases definitely went up. Now, would it go up to 40 percent no way on earth right the oxygen is usually hovering around 21 percent uh, maybe it drops down to 20.9 uh, but definitely an increase of trace gases so that could be in the form of carbon dioxide that could be in the form of methane um, many different trace gases and this is why we have to be environmentally friendly and conscious about the extra components that we are adding into the atmosphere and activity two will definitely kind of go over uh, human impact on the atmosphere. So uh, I think we kind of went back over uh, the composition of Earth's atmosphere. We talked about that the atmosphere is a working system in that it has many different components that are always being exchanged um, and it's part of an ongoing working system or cycle. You have the nitrogen cycle, the carbon dioxide, the oxygen, um, all of these cycles work together to create 
um, this beautiful bubble that protects our planet and allows us to live in such a, a beautiful place. So I hope that was uh, in, informative and you learned a little bit about Earth's atmosphere. You can always uh, pause and rewatch the video. Um, also, please show us what you have learned and tweet at KCS Science. Guys, I hope you're doing well. Stay healthy, stay positive, and if you have time, clean your room. Your parents will like that. Adios.